Grace. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. And for those of you who are repeat offenders, welcome back to the Conscious Basket Show. My name is Samantha McCord and I am the founder and CEO of Conscious Basket. And on the show, we are going to be interviewing extraordinary people just trying to make a difference in this world and giving you tips on how you can too. So as always, if you like what we do, please subscribe, download a couple episodes and leave a comment below. I will read them all, but for now, let's just dive right in. What we currently work with is a very high developed high standard factory that we have carefully inspectioned uh, together with our partners. Same thing in Portugal, same thing with our partners, uh, same thing with other partners in other countries. And we reveal everything about these factories because we did a very in-depth analysis of what they do, how they operate what resources they use, and we publish all this information on our website so that people know who are we working with. And for us, that's very important. Today, we welcome Bernardo, the CEO and founder of 8000 Picks, one of the first waterproof hem shoes on the market, but they don't stop there. They take a 360 degree approach to make this planet a better place by empowering their customers to opt into a more sustainable, eco-friendly footwear solution. 8000 Kicks is made of super strong cannabis hemp fibers. The soles are made of ecological algal blooms. They have the first natural hemp insoles, are waterproof, 100% vegan, and eco-friendly. In this episode, Bernardo tells us about how the idea for 8000 Kicks came from a really fun night out with his friends, his views on sustainability sustainable entrepreneurship, how important a transparent supply chain is, and how he got his grandma, who has over 50 years of textile experience, to help him create this amazing brand. Let's dive right in. Hey guys, welcome back to the Conscious Basket Show. My name is Samantha McCourt and I am CEO and founder of Conscious Basket. Today we welcome Bernardo. He is the CEO and founder of 8000 Kicks, one of the best waterproof hemp shoes on the market. Welcome to the show. Hey, Samantha, thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Welcome. So what's the weather like in Portugal right now? Is it like super sunny and nice? Uh, actually, it's uh, raining. Oh, <laughs> we stopped. Yeah. It's actually sunny in Amsterdam right now, which is very rare. Okay. So okay. Um, I'll, I'll take your sunshine for today. <laughs> okay, no problem. You can take it today. <laughs> I'll take it the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to just get straight into it and talk a little bit about what you were doing before you became the sustainable entrepreneur you are today, because you're a pretty young guy. And you've got done quite a bit and seen a lot of the world. So tell the listeners a little bit about your world travels. Uh, yeah, I've done quite a lot of traveling, um, mainly due to my, I was working abroad, studying abroad. I lived in, uh, so I'm originally from Portugal, but uh, and I'm currently in Portugal, but uh, I studied and lived in the U.S. I studied at Purdue University. I lived in France. I studied there. I studied in China. Uh, that was part of my master's. I did a double degree. Uh, then I also traveled all around Europe, hitchhiking back on my even earlier days. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I moved to London. I was living and working in London for a few years. And then I was like, okay, enough of this bouncing back and forth. I need to uh, settle for a mission to set up like a to fight for something bigger. So I decided to move back. Been doing this for uh, almost three years now. And uh, it has been uh, quite a challenge. And uh, sky's the limit. I can't, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine what type of challenges you've run into because there's so much that goes into manufacturing something and then also making it sustainable. Yeah. Um, but when you decided to pick the hemp shoe, can you tell me a little bit about how you decided to pick um, this product? Yeah, it was a bit of a random luck, I guess. Uh, we were all... Uh, so, full honesty, I didn't know what hemp was. Uh, I knew it, there was some people smoking it. To be honest, I didn't even know what, what, what hemp, like, what's cannabis, what's hemp. I knew it was, I mean, I smoked it before and my, my knowledge about it was pretty limited. Um, and there was once we were all, uh, it, it was a five in the morning idea, let's call it like that. We were all together with some 
friend and someone came up with the idea of making a smokable shoe. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, the worst idea ever. Uh, and I was like, actually, I've seen some bags and some backpacks and uh, some wallets made of hemp, uh, made of cannabis. And then uh, I was like, maybe we should just try it for fun. And, uh, and we decided, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's do it. So I came back to the most unlikely person ever, which was my grandmother. Uh, she had over 50, she has over 50 years experience in textiles. And I was like, grandma, you gotta help me do this. <laughs> and, uh, then she was like, I'm going to kick you out of my house. You're not getting into drugs. She was like, Hey, get out of here. You stoner. Yeah, and I was like, "No, this is actually uh, uh, it's it's not it's not like that. It's industrial hemp. It's not like a drug or, or what do you have." And then the next the next uh, weeks, we got some hemp to her house, and I showed her. Look, I told you it says okay, <laughs> and she was like, "Okay, we can try this." And then uh, and then finally, we started making some samples. But, I mean, they were pretty bad. No one would ever use that, but uh, we continued. And we were like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get it better. Let's improve the outsoles. Let's improve the insoles. Let's do this. And then after a while, we came up with uh, our first version of what is uh, uh, the Explorer, which is our first product. That's amazing. And I just love that you decided to partner with your grandmother. <laughs> yeah. Even though, I mean, she has 50 years of textile um, experience. So she's a wonderful yeah. partner for you. And you had mentioned to me that she became a little bit of a local star in your area. Uh, yeah. How did that happen? Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, that has been pretty fun, actually. Uh, so suddenly we got all the TV stations telling us and saying, we want you on the show. And we were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we went on the local opera here in Portugal. We went on the, I mean, all the morning shows. We went all the, then we did the afternoon shows and then we did, uh, uh, we went on the news and then we were like, wow. <laughs> like, this is happening. This is something big. Yeah. We were like, wow. Well, uh, suddenly she's, she, she, I mean, she never been on TV. She's the shyest person ever. And then she's like going on TV, like, okay, again. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was crazy. I mean, uh, we were definitely not expecting this and it's going viral. Definitely here in Portugal, it's going super viral. Yeah, and it's, it's really a wonderful thing too because it's aligning with your own values around sustainability. Yeah. And, you know, you had mentioned, you know, it was a crazy night with your friends and you were joking around like, let's smoke a shoe, but it really does help set you up for what you're looking to do for the rest of your life. So tell us a little bit about how you view sustainability and what this means to you. Yeah. uh, So, so even before I started this project, I'm a vegetarian. I, uh, I have my own uh, eco-friendly concerns. Uh, And if I wanted to do something, I wanted to do something that reflect those concerns. Uh, So when we were like IDA, I mean, doing the initial ideation for the project, we knew that it must match those kind of values. Otherwise, we're just uh, paddling backwards. I mean, that's not supposed to happen. But uh, in my mind, in order to create true sustainability, you have to create because you have added value, not because you remove value from the products that already exist. So it's like if you create sustainable products that have inferior quality to what already exists, that is basically saying, okay, you're just buying it because it's sustainable and you're paying extra for it. uh, And you're also paying extra for a product that is not as good. Uh, That is like paddling backward. uh, uh, So uh, what in our opinion should be a sustainable product is not only a product that is sustainable, but also much better than whatever exists in the market. And that's the only way to push sustainability forward. Uh, And that's what we did with hemp. Hemp, uh, we're still working and developing it every day, meeting new suppliers. But in the end, our goal, uh, and we already kind of achieved it, but still it's work in progress. It's uh, to create, uh, to make hemp great again. And that is by using hemp. Uh, We are making super strong shoes. Uh, There are also uh, uh, water repellent and splash proof. But at the same time, we use hemp, which is a super ecological material. 
that uh, consumes five times less water than cotton. Hemp uh, absorbs a lot of CO2. It uses almost zero water, while cotton uses a lot. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it absorbs a lot of radiation and it, uh, it restores the nutrients in the soil, while cotton is actually, actually super bad for the soils. So uh, the entire advantages of hemp is like, is what we identify ourselves with. And for that reason, we use that material and we're trying to push that material forward. Uh, but on, not only that, we also use algae in the bottom soles. Uh, this is one of the reasons that makes them so light. But uh, the fact that it has algae inside, it's, it, it, the plastic bottom is made of algae. And basically, we try to redevelop the entire product around the eco-friendly concept. So every single material is either recycled or made of natural sources. Even the boxes are recycled. Even the plastic bag around the boxes that comes in the mail is made from corn. So every single detail is thought to like uh, be sustainable. It's so intentional. Everything you're doing is so intentional. And I love that all of the ingredients to the shoe are unassuming. Like you wouldn't think, yeah. like, you know, nobody really understands the, I mean, not nobody, but a lot of people don't really know the cotton industry and the impact that it actually does have on the environment and the difference yeah. between organic and not organic, fair trade versus non-fair trade. And so just completely cutting that out and then picking a product or material that's very, very, very durable. Yeah. And yep. You know, you just went through a little bit of the manufacturing process and how you created this because it took you guys about a year from 2018 in about like May 2019, you had your Explorer shoe. Yeah. But um, the innovation of using algae and how you do your boxes and, you know, just the shoe itself. And it's very durable because you had mentioned even to me that you and your team have traveled all over the world in these shoes. Yeah. So... Tell me about a story when you were wearing the shoe and you were like, okay, yeah, this shoe is dope. Like, I know that this thing's going to take off. <laughs> yeah, uh, to be honest, this was uh, when I when I made the first prototypes. I mean, they were still developing and I was already showing it to friends. And I really, I had my most stingy friends saying that they want to buy the shoes. Oh, that's perfect. And I was like... <laughs> Okay, this is gonna take off. <laughs> if this guy's gonna buy, and then a lot of people are gonna buy, and I, I knew it. It's, I mean, fair enough, right? You are like a super stingy, like friend. He never buys anything, and he wants to pay a hundred bucks for your shoes. Okay, this thing is gonna take off. <laughs> yeah, and I don't really feel like a hundred dollars is that big of a difference compared to what other people would pay for like Nikes or something like that. And it's a high performance, high durable shoe. And, you know, you had also told me that you'd done a lot of research and like compared your shoe to a couple of the other hemp shoes on the market. Cause you're not the only one on the market. You're just the most durable and the most thoughtful in my personal opinion. But how do you guys rank and stack up to the other shoes and why is it that your shoes better? Uh, okay. I mean, unfortunately there are not as many hemp shoe brands out there. Um, and I think, we should not be selfish and uh, competitive in that way. I think our mission is to make him great again. And, uh, make him great again. That should yeah. be a hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, should, we should make a hat like that. There's already a brand that does that. Uh, we actually cooperate with them sometimes. They're pretty cool. Uh, but uh, uh, we're we just doing a standard 8,000 kicks, a uh, simple logo brand. Uh, uh, we, 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 we check we're launching uh, in a few weeks um, so uh, pretty excited as well nice but, but yeah I mean there are a few brands out there and we want to to grow hemp together we are not like oh no we did this hemp we are the best we, we don't want to go that route because it's simply it's not against our goal of pushing hemp for this material uh, but yeah we believe I mean we are, uh, in terms of developing, we are a little bit ahead of them. Mind my, <laughs> it's just my uh, humble opinion. But you can uh, do a humble uh, brag. It's okay. Yeah, um, but I think they're doing a good job as well. Uh, what we would like to see is other big brands doing more hemp. Actually, that that would be a great way to to to. Uh, 
I mean, that will be a great achievement for us as a small brand to convince the bigger brands, hey, look at what these guys are doing. Maybe we should do the same. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, for instance, I know that we already, uh, we we got some bigger brands. We, we actually, I was, I was like sitting here working and I noticed some big orders from uh, big shoe companies. And I was like, uh, hey guys, thank you so much for ordering my shoes. <laughs> uh, this was actually came from Tom's. Uh, oh, wonderful! And, uh, and they were like, "Yeah, we super like your product." We're thinking, man, I really appreciate that you're using hemp. That is great initiative from you. Uh, if you need anything, we can help you develop this product. And we're like, we we're not here to be like uh, we don't show this to anyone. We many times we just uh, share our suppliers. So there's like, okay, feel free to work with this guy. He has good quality hemp. Uh, but but in the end, it's like uh, we, we just want to push him and as a great material of choice for everyone to use it. That I mean, that's what we're here for. And I think that that's such a different thing about being in sustainability and the type of um, industry that we're yeah. in is that we all are trying to help push each other forward. And while, of course, you know, I'm, I have a very big sports background, so I'm always going to be competitive. So <laughs> I always like to ask that question, but at the end of the day, yeah, sharing suppliers, um, maybe ordering together, making sure that we're lowering our impact yeah. and then also helping others do better. And you had mentioned that you share your suppliers, but a big part of this show, I like to highlight a transparent supply chain and you know where every single one of your products come from how it's made um will you explain to the listeners why this is a total guilt-free product uh yeah we so this is very important for us uh for inspire of our components actually uh come from portugal part from comes from china and uh, apart from romania um mostly some not a lot now these days some hemp comes from Romania, some hemp comes from France. The thing is, people have a lot of misconceptions about these countries simply because they're not like UK or United States. So they assume that they're like a third world country, uh, which is not, in fact, true. Um, and we, what we try to, to pass is this, like to clarify these misconceptions about these countries. For instance, in China, they a lot of people think, okay, there's only ch- children working in a factory. Uh, <laughs> and we're like, uh, actually, it's not true. Um, I mean, there are certainly cases like that. I mean, I cannot talk for like a country of 1 billion people. Yeah, exactly. But uh, what we currently work with is a very high developed, high standard factory that we have carefully inspection. Uh, together with our partners, same thing in Portugal, same thing with our partners, uh, same thing with other partners in other countries. And we reveal everything about these factories because we did a very in-depth analysis of what they do, how they operate, what resources they use, and we publish all this information on our website so that people know who are we working with. And for us, that's very important. That is so important. And, you know, I think that I just have to highlight a few things about you guys at 8,000 Kicks. It's just so wonderful to see young people coming together and also partnering with your grandma. I just can't get over that. It's the best. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I, I just... Every time I see somebody come to the table with a good quality product, it, just because it's sustainable doesn't mean it needs to be, um, you know, not good quality. I think that there's a misconception surrounding yeah. that. And I am so thankful that you guys have, you know, this wonderful product because, if, you know, let's say, for example, you're looking for a shoe and you're like, oh, I need to buy you know, this Adidas with, you know, this type of material or this Nike with kangaroo, you know, leather. It's not the truth anymore. There's a quality shoe out there for you to hit the pavement, whether you're traveling across China with a backpack on your back or you're just going to, you know, your local market and you're trying to avoid the rain or a puddle. Like this is a great shoe to do that. And, you know, I think that too, when you're looking at the market for cannabis and, and hemp, like you said, you know, you do have that one side of the market where we're looking at THC, CBD, all of that, but this material is going to, in a way can replace a cotton in a lot of ways in so many ways. And you, you have, um, a couple of things coming together in uh, the future. You had mentioned you have some new products coming out. Did you want to highlight any of those? 
Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying we have a we have this uh, new hem head coming in the next two weeks. So all the all the calls that I've been doing, I've been using my head. <laughs> uh, you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, so everyone. They look great. Them. You look really good in that hat. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have a uh, new stuff coming up later on. Uh, I cannot reveal anything else. Oh, but, okay. Uh, Everybody on the uh, call do a, a NDA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's we have been developing some exciting new stuff. Uh, it's still under developing, but the, the the results we have achieved are already pretty cool. Uh, so we're actually pretty excited for what's coming later this year. I just we love all the innovation that you guys have going on because it took you, you know, almost a full year to even do the shoe. And like yeah. you mentioned, it's a, you know, a water resistant, pretty much waterproof shoe in the event that it rains yeah. or you step in a puddle. So there's a lot of little things and my wheels are turning about what you're going to do with that because you could do a lot of stuff. Plus with your grandma with 50 years of textile experience, like who knows what you guys are going to come up with. I'm very excited to, to see what the next thing is. And um, I just have one last question for you. So if you were to leave the listeners with anything today, if they remember one thing from our conversation, what would you want them to remember? Okay. Um, okay, that's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I think I think if if I had to 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 uh, to send one last message to be about him, uh, not about us, uh, but about him. Uh, I think it's a lifestyle and people should embrace it. And, uh, I mean, I'm building my own, uh, full hemp wardrobe and I think should, some pe people should try it out and see how it goes because it's like, uh, hemp is the future and, uh, not only ecological, but also in terms of quality, uh, in a lot of ways it's going to replace uh, polyester. So, uh, uh, that's the message I want to send people. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. It was so nice to get to know you a little bit better and learn I'll all about 8,000 kicks mm -hmm. and keep us updated on the next big thing. Will do. All right. sure. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you all for joining us on another episode of Conscious Basket. And just a small reminder, Conscious Basket is not just hosting interviews. We are in the process of launching our marketplace where our goal is to make it super easy for you to make conscious decisions about what you're buying by knowing the origin of the products and services. We're using our technology to highlight a transparent supply chain with our vendors, which means you know what goes into those products and where they came from to make sure those things you buy don't weigh on your conscience. And to ensure this piece of mind, we have developed a score to rank the sustainability of the purchase. For instance, how much water is being used, trees saved, animal lives, human rights, and so on. So if you're an entrepreneur with a sustainable product and would be interested in being on the platform, please email us at info at consciousbasket.com. Also, if you're an entrepreneur, thought leader, or academic that would like to be a guest on the show, please drop us a line at the same email. And if you're just interested in taking a closer look at us, you can also take a look at our website, which is www.consciousbasket.com. And as always, you can explore the topics we discussed in the show notes and find many more topics on all of our social platforms. So give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn at Conscious Basket. If you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to our show and leave us a comment with any key takeaways. I read them all. Share with your friends, family, post a screenshot on your social about the podcast so that we can extend our reach to help propel our movement forward. Finally, just another small reminder that perfectionism is not the goal here. In my opinion, perfectionism is what gets in the way of all of us collectively picking what I like to call your thing, which is whatever you choose to make a positive impact on this world. Thank you again for joining us. <laughs>